late. I am recording. So I wanna thank everyone for coming out again, welcoming people back if they've been here before and, and thanking um, all the new guests for coming to, I don't remember what number exhibition this is, but it's approaching the gallery's third year anniversary. This is the off the wall exhibition highlighting BIPOC muralists from around the country, but also locally as well, given um, exposing their talents and, and also trying to pair them with some community organizations who are seeking um, art in their spaces if they can't afford it or if they don't know where to search for some artists. Um, again, the artists featured tonight are not just local, but we do, our, we do have some here. Um, in order, in alphabetical order, we have Anwar Floyd Pruitt, who is over here. Um, his work is over here. He's actually doing another fundraiser right now too, so he can't be present. And we'll talk about each of the pieces um, as we go. Um, Brad Anthony Bernard, who's is actively painting on his um, work right now um, for another organization. I don't know if they wanna be announced, but um, we also have Eric Salgado, who might be outside painting a second mural, <laughs> but he does have another one up right now, and um, he's from Chicago. I, along with Kirsten Gaznavi, who is on the other, here she comes. So we're partnering on a mural. We are um, expanding her, her doll aesthetic to like a board and a puzzle that you might see in a doctor's office. And so um, Hiram Lee, who's on Zoom, she's in Chicago. Her work is behind us and we'll let her talk about that. This is now the third time this year I'm working with Hiram. It's been such a pleasure. Um, Kevin Boatwright, another Milwaukee artist, his work in the hallway. Sam Kirk, she was gonna try to be on the line. It's actually her birthday. She has the piece by the DJ. Um, she's also a really astounded uh, muralist, worked internationally as well. So I wanted to wish her a happy birthday and for um, still submitting work because she's crazy busy like everyone else um, for this project. And last but not least, Vida Shell, standing right here. His work is on the other side on the accented wall. Um, he's from Monroe, Louisiana. And so this is just showing the range and reach of some of the people the gallery has contacts with. Um, another muralist couldn't participate, but was initially part of, she was in Charlotte, um, got called for another project. So she couldn't contribute in time or get it shipped in time. Her name is Georgie Nakima. She's super dope, super talented, very young. And she's actually a self-taught muralist. She taught herself and she's getting a lot of contracts right now. And so part of it is I wanted to um, show like elevated, um, Aesthetics with muraling, um, in my opinion, Milwaukee is um, developing their mural game. There are some longer standing artists who have been doing it for a while. Um, I think just getting exposure to more experienced muralists or artists helps them push their narrative, push their development and how they go about approaching murals and I also want to talk have each artist talk about how they approach their practice because it is a hybrid of public and private um, work and sometimes they have to edit their work or the content that they might really want to put out there to satiate a client. So first and foremost this exhibition was curated to give the artist agency. I'm not big on like censorship. And so I wanted each artist to kind of get out what they wanted, but then also letting them know it is a possibility, possibility that it could be paired with an organization. So they can say what they want, but then there's an opportunity for um, like organizational business um, to purchase it as well. And so some are uh, more uh, out there and some are uh, probably safer, safer, but um, Again, I, I want to give artists agency to talk about what they want. So this is the artist talk to let each of the artists quickly talk about their piece, maybe how they approach the material use they like, 
and um, yeah, and maybe how they approach doing murals, given that it is artists practice is private for themselves, but then they're entering a public realm. Um, I will start with Hiram because she's usually waiting. <laughs> so she's on Zoom. Uh, usually, I'm gonna. I'm also gonna try to walk around. Um, actually, I'll start with someone else because I'll I'll add you to the screen behind me, Hiram, so they can see you. And so, um, I'm gonna start with Brad. <laughs> I'm gonna flip the screen. Oh, I can see oh. they work here. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> um, I'm gonna come back to you because I'm gonna let the audience see you. I can just see you because I'm looking at the screen. I forgot to turn the screen on behind me. So I'm gonna start with another artist and I'll jump back to you. Oh yeah, no worries. Okay. All right, good evening everybody. I'm Brad Anthony Bernard, uh, I'm a muralist, uh, educator here in Milwaukee. For those of you that don't know me, uh, this particular uh, mural you're looking at is actually a commission for adversity for the center. Um, in fact, Kate Cleveland University was obviously invited to uh, participate in an exhibition. I believe that was last spring. Was it that last spring? It was this past spring, yes. Okay. Um, at the Black Holocaust Museum for an exhibition that was called Lifeline. Uh, the, ultimate the Ultimate Bond. Bond. Yes, thank you. <laughs> but uh, so a lot of, in, in, in some of my works, I've, I've worked with maps because I think uh, location, uh, place of birth, place of residence um, are, are, are great, great ways to just kind of accentuate what somebody is about. Because we're all about where we come from, right? And so uh, for this particular uh, concept here, uh, the heart of the community is, is the theme of the campaign. And so what I've done is I'm representing the four uh, large Midwest cities, Milwaukee, Chicago, Indianapolis, Detroit. Um, I wanted to establish the compositions through the use of maps. And so in my own personal work and one particular body of work called Blue Drops, I use maps as a, as a way of doing portraiture, um, but what I call portrait minimums, which is just based, basically taking an image and likeness of somebody and then incorporating uh, maps and other symbolic uh, references or factual information. And so uh, with each of these concepts here, uh, to identify each of the different cities, I've used the map because if anybody is from a particular city, they're going to recognize the interstate signs that run through that city. Also, too, uh, uh, with the Bursamy's uh, mission to, to reach out to Black and brown communities to educate them and recruit ownership for blood and tissue and organ. Um, because the most underserved populations are oftentimes the most in need of those particular things as far as healing and body is concerned. So, uh, that being said, uh, uh, we're showing different uh, ethnicities of people of color, so to speak. And then also, too, um, anytime somebody wants to know where there was a thriving uh, Black business community in any large major city across the country, Usually, you can just look at where the interstates run through the city. And that would be an indication of where Black communities were driving at one time. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, even in this particular concept here, Joe Louis Gardner got a sculpture of the brown bomber uh, fist uh, representing uh, Joe Louis. And then also, uh, what you see in Pose is it's called Joe Louis Garden, which is a red line area where much of the Black community in Detroit is concentrated. So, um, just kind of bringing to light some things in some window manner, but then also being able to uh, showcase recognizable landmarks and some of the highlights of each of those cities. So uh, that's the concept behind uh, um, working these. And although the four individual pieces, I thought it was important that they be uh, at least uh, conceptualized and worked on at one time together um, so that uh, that cohesive thread composition. Uh, is evident. So no matter how they're displayed individually, um, they still resonate as, as a unit or a, a single piece of themselves together. So uh, right. that's where I'm at. I, I mean, I obviously got a little self-conscious because I'm still definitely in the process <laughs> compared to many of the others we're going to see tonight. 
But um, because of the nature of the exhibit, I think the team has the opportunity is just been good to deal with this working process and then uh, have people see how it comes together. And for the remainder of the exhibition, I, I guess I'll be working on it in the state. And uh, <laughs> I, I need to be diligent about uh, documenting the process because I have not documented any of the process. I've been so concentrated on executing the work itself. But it's, it's a great opportunity um, to let my work be uh, showcased in a way where it's going to be on the eyes of different communities and the upper Midwest too. So uh, thank you. you can come back the exhibition is up until december 19th and watch brad's performative mural making process um along with some others including my kirsten and myself um hiram i'm gonna jump back to you i can't get my screen on behind me so oh no worries i can just uh share my... just talk Okay, I'm gonna yeah. flip it so you can see your piece. Okay, sounds good. So Hiram Lee's piece. This is Hiram. Say hi. Hello, everybody. Hi, <laughs> hi people here. Um, <laughs> this is her piece right here. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your piece and background and how you go about approaching? mural making in different communities because you are actually not from the u.s but um our uh current resident of chicago yeah definitely uh thanks for having me in this wonderful mural show i was really excited uh while i'm making this mural uh i am you know, like Fatima said, I'm from originally from South Korea, currently living in Chicago, South Side neighbor, neighborhood. Uh, and I'm, I trained by African American uh, renowned muralist from Chicago, such as Bernard Williams and Dorian Sylvain um, and Damon Lamar Reed. And they were all my great mentor to teach how to paint mural. So I was very influenced by their, uh, you know, their idea, ethics, and uh, delivering their political message. So they were uh, my influence and motivation uh, when I first started as a um, young muralist. I guess I'm still young muralist, but. Um, I guess to me, like making a representational mural and thinking about the co community oriented mural project is pretty um, important part of my practice. And I'm interested in multiracial dialogue and cross regional dialogue as well in terms of uh, gentrification because living in South Side, I see so many um, fast pace of gentrification is happening right now, especially my neighborhood. I'm living near University of Chicago. They're trying to uh, buy the property from certain neighborhood to build um, the school facility so that they try to push out a uh, certain community. Uh, and this summer I had a chance to teach uh, specifically Parkway Garden uh, high, high schoolers, and uh, they were sharing about their community concern as well. So as a, you know, educator, mural educator and the muralist, I guess I start to a little bit more think about their concern, um, you know, even though I'm not originally from uh, Chicago, because I involved with the community many times. Um, so, and also as a, you know, person of woman of color, I also experienced a lot of stereotyping and microaggression as well. Uh, so I've been thinking a lot about what is the mean to building a healthy allyship with a different, you know, community with the people of color. Um, so, and, and so I was thinking about the notion of this gentrification and racial tension in Milwaukee and Chicago as well. I think that's 
uh, pretty um, prevalent uh, in Chicago and Milwaukee. So I also incorporate map like what Brett did. And uh, with left side of the map, it's Milwaukee, right side is um, Chicago, but then the center, I actually um, incorporate the people, uh, which is portrait from the community from Chicago and Milwaukee, uh, which I engage. So um, I asked Fatima to um, provide the photo from Milwaukee. So the person from the left and the right side that is from Milwaukee and the center is from Chicago that I interview her. Um, and I am definitely wanted to su support and advocate, uh, you know, women of color um, as a woman of color. Oh, Fatima, I guess I, your my microphone is muted. I'm sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> the artist over here, whose birth, she's celebrating her birthday right now. I think it's a big birthday. Um, it's Sam Kirk from Chicago. Um, she um, is pretty established and you will see, this is her signature aesthetic, the mark making in the faces. Um, she also highlights women. That's her main subject matter women of color. And so you'll see a lot of her murals around Chicago, but she's also recently done a mural in Marrakesh, in Morocco, um, really all over the place. And so um, she was one of the first people like, you said we can do anything, does it have to be square? I'm like, no, it doesn't. And so she carved into her piece and gave it a little bit more life um, with the form of the, the boards that were um, utilized. She's very big into color. And if you can see closely, it's a lot of layering and texture in it too. But again, she highlights women. So she does um, more form and um, the, the mark making in the faces is her signature too. Behind you to my right, I'm gonna flip. In that corner is a Milwaukee-based artist named Anwar Floyd Pruitt. Um, he's a recent grad um, from UW-Madison. He's from Milwaukee, however. And um, one of his signature aesthetics is um, highlights his identity. And so he does a lot of stenciling of his face um in different forms so he, it's a hybrid of abstraction and uh some representation but um he does a lot of layering of spray paint with his stenciling and so his piece is called our crown and it's based on a quote from james baldwin which i will read in a second The quote is, our crown has already been bought and paid for. All we have to do is wear it. The quote is actually on the piece, but it's, um, it's been kind of uh, covered with some of the layering of the stenciling and of his face. But um, another signature symbol in his work outside of his face is the mirror so that people can see themselves and um, also reflect upon their identity, history, and future at the same time. And so that is his contribution to um, this exhibition. And he's also, I think he's executed about two or three other murals this year um, already in addition to this one. And so I appreciate his contribution to that. And I just wanted to highlight the very different aesthetics between the four artists that we've already highlighted already. And that is a signature of what the gallery tries to do is show diversity within the aesthetic too and not have people feel pigeonholed like this is the only way you can execute some type of art. 
I'm gonna try to move to a different room, but we can first go here in the hallway. And we will um, highlight Kevin Boatwright and his piece. I have a wow that makes sense. We will see. <laughs> <laughs> it's tight. You need to get close to me. <laughs> well, um, Go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, first off, I'm telling you, bro, right? Uh, I want to start with saying that uh, artists, creators are often pain or curse or labor with the ability to see what is, what isn't. And what could possibly be. Through that, my inspiration for this, well, first of all, this is speaking about money, sex, drugs, and violence. So I take a tour through my neighborhood. I see uh, what I like to call pretty murals, pretty murals in really shitty places. So uh, I don't know, I'll give you a couple of examples before I go further. Um, 37 or so, I believe we got a We Are Champions posters or mural on the back of a filling station that's notorious. That I've been on all my life, notorious for selling paraphernalia, uh, everything you need to make your bomb to a crack pipe. But yet, somebody through proxy or whatever. Uh, decided that was a good place for this. You can say we are champions. We get this place is still operating on the other side of the world. I go a little farther. I go into uh, North Division High School the other day. Uh, it's a nice new mural there. Pretty mural. Uh, I go into school, smell like nothing but weed. I tell the security guard, man, it smell like weed. Kids all in the hallway. Okay. Pretty mirror there too, though. Shitty place, pretty mirror. Next place, Moody Pool. Girl, she painted a mirror. Organizing, young girl, teenager. For the mirror, we can dry her blanks, splatter all over. Right over, pretty mirror, shitty place. So I say, okay, we beautify things. We beautify things. Okay, but before you can beautify anything, you probably should clean it, right? Before you can clean anything, you probably should recognize the filth. You know what I mean? Recognize the filth. So you got these pretty murals in. I don't know. I'm glad we got a, a Korean artist here because a lot of these mural stars seem like propaganda. You know what I'm saying? Propaganda. Like, I don't know, like, like, like double talk. You put a mural about urban farming across the street where kids don't even fucking eat. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like, 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 what is that? You, you throw a green space, and before the ribbon is even blew off the ground with all the ottomans and everybody leave, you got the crackheads and the pimps sitting right there in comfort. I wouldn't send my kid there. I'm talking about, I just think it's a disconnect in, in, a, in a total order of things. And is it propaganda? And what is this propaganda for? Because me, I'm a visual person. I see pretty things, I see pretty signs. You know what I'm saying? I see pretty billboards. And I think, okay, these cats are on the up and up. This is a neighborhood on the rise. When in fact, it's not. You know what I mean? So I just approach this as a anti propaganda. Maybe uh, we can visit maybe these arts organizations uh, for all this posit positive, fake positive, or whatever mineralization they put in neighborhoods where it is not reflected that uh, we show uh, imagery of actually what's there. Because I don't know what the what the, what the imagery is for. Is, is it to welcome people to come and take over our neighborhood, to feel safe to come into these neighborhoods? Or is it for, for us? It's not, it's not for me because I'm talking about, like I said, I'm a visual person. 
We got all this crime, all this killing, and I don't know, I've been locked up before. I've been to a lot of pub realms and everything. And the first thing is like admit. And then the first thing they always do is show you what's in your crime little booklet, whatever. You got a victim, they're gonna show you the shooting you did or whatever. Sometimes it doesn't resonate until you actually see. It. You know what I'm saying? So I just think we should just show what these communities really are before we try to beautify it. I'm talking, about let's recognize the filth before we try to cleanse the filth, and then even before we even start trying to beautify. Yeah, that's pretty much all I'm all about right here. Thank you for Tim for the opportunity to give us out. I don't do a lot of music. Thank you, Kevin. So we're going to oh, keep wow. going into the other room. I'm going to flip the screen. Hopefully, y'all are not getting dizzy on Zoom. Sorry when I flip the screen, it inverts the image. Is Eric around? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Salud. <laughs> Welcome. So I've worked with Eric quite a bit too. He's been a gift. I actually met Eric um, as we were introduced as um, art collectors for yeah. UWM, yep. a talk um, a few years, a couple of years ago, it's not that long, a couple of years ago. And he came to the space and then he's an artist as well. And we always, we found a way to pair um, our programming together. And so he is a multi-talented artist. He does a lot of printmaking as well. He also has some prints on the other side that are for the taking. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then he also has, screen printed some hoodies that are in the gift shop, but this is his mural. You want to tell us about Funk the System? Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've, been, uh, I've been painting these yellow and purple characters maybe for like five years or so, but uh, uh, a lot of the inspiration from it comes from Mesoamerican art. So looking at like Mayan sculptures, Aztec sculptures, and like going back into like the Aztec Codex and pulling things that I find interesting. Uh, my background is illegal graffiti. So running around Chicago, painting where I should not be painting, being in places where I shouldn't be and getting chased out of spots. Um, so it's, it's combining both uh, using the spray paint and then uh, taking from like my, um, my heritage and just trying to like look historically into myself and my family and see what I can pull from. Um, to create something that is is unique and about now. Um, and then Funk the System is just, you know, uh, Fuck the System. I, uh, for me, graffiti is like uh, real, it's the most democratic art form for me because you don't have to ask for permission, at least not for legal graffiti. You can just walk up to a wall with a can or a marker and literally just write your message, whatever you want, without anybody's permission, as long as you don't mind the consequences of what comes with it. But uh, that's a, a lot of that is kind of uh, my inspiration. That's why I do it. And then uh, Funk the System is just a message that I'm trying to convey with this piece. I'm working on another one right now outside too. So if you guys are still around, you know, pop, pop outside for a second and see where I'm at with it. I'm I'm almost at the outlining part of it, but I'm trying to work pretty pretty fast, like as if I had to do it and the cops are coming. <laughs> <laughs> So he highlighted some um, some poignant things about mur murals are like a, a offset of the graffiti art. And so there was a lot of demonization and criminalization of black and brown people who were in this art form, whether it be graffiti or murals. And now it's like the hot thing to do. Yeah. And the, the modus operandi, operandi for gentrification too, sometimes like let's go faux beautify, like Kevin was talk about, talking about 
these neighborhoods and make it um, pleasant, aesthetically pleasant and approachable and welcoming enough where the people are not really here so that they can, can find, safer, yeah. yeah, feel safer and find value in it, even though people might exist in these areas already. Oh, for sure. And uh, so um, that is another um, focus with this program to the mural exhibition as we speak, because um, I want to, again, to highlight the BIPOC artists who have been doing it for a long time and are still, or who are new or younger and doing it, but um, are battling like the commercialization and the history, the known history that they know of, the criminality <laughs> that they've oh, experienced sure. with it, and um, that that balancing <laughs> that balancing act, and so um, yeah, we'll jump to the next artist. The easiest one for me to do is is Biden. I'm gonna try to flip it. Sorry about that. One second. Can you see it? There's Vitus. There's Michael. <laughs> What's up, bro? So you want me to go ahead? What yeah, up? go ahead. Tell us about your mural. You did an introduction for everybody else. Vitus. <laughs> Vitus, Vitus has been the worst guest artist. No, I'm just joking. No, he's a <laughs> between him and Michael, they stressed me out. Um, no, um, Vitus again is from Monroe, Louisiana. He actually had a solo show in this exact room a year ago. Um, it was called Birds Fly South, highlighting um, and humanizing. Um, people from the South and also commenting on how a lot of Northerners, Black Northerners are going back to the South after fleeing from the South for, protect, for, to, for protection and economic opportunity. They're now reverting back to the South for the same protection and economic opportunity. And then offsetting like the stereotyping of considering the people from the South slow or what have you when they're you know possibly more progressive and hospitable, that's a stereotype, but it's true, um, than people from the North. And so you wanna talk about your aesthetic, your mural and yeah. your so, practice? So um, for me, um, I've been exhibiting since um, 2002 as an artist and exhibiting around the country. And for me, uh, doing murals was a part of, I started thinking about like, uh, how my work wasn't being seen in certain places. So I started thinking about murals as a way to connect to communities that wouldn't normally go to galleries and things of that nature. So I started in my work, I've always played around with the uh, balance between what high art is and what slow art. And uh, well, like graffiti has been historically been considered a low art form, low, low art form, but in my work, I play with that because me being a non-traditional artist, because everybody that's not a white male was, is considered a non-traditional artist, right? Um, so in my work, I like playing around with those ideas of what's what's considered a high art, what's considered low art, and and then also how how communicating between like people that don't come from an art background and people that do come from background kind of find a balance with to, to, to be able to talk to both, um, yeah, both, uh, both groups of people. So with my work, uh, I'm from the South um, and I play it as if I'm a Southern artist, rap artist. Um, a lot of the themes in my uh, work comes from music, uh, like using rappers as, uh, as these, um, as a as a place to like philosoph like a philosophers uh, and a lot of finding like the deeper meaning behind a lot of these the, the work uh, a lot of these songs and using it in the work. Um, this work in particular comes from um, uh, Baby from Cash Money's uh, whole rant on um, the Breakfast Club with talking about put some respect on my name. Uh, and in another song, Webby, I guess it's the way we talk in Louisiana, he says, respect minds in the song. So what I was playing with, playing with in this, with this piece is 
um, using that as a, a device to, and using the, that saying as a device to kind of like comment on uh, respecting the community as uh, for people that's coming into the community that's trying to gentrify. So uh, what I wanted to do and what I like doing, I do a lot of traveling. I like to connect to people. I like to go to the, the, the community spots, the hood spots. And it don't matter where I go, Omaha, uh, Baltimore, wherever, I'm still going to find that, the hood because that's what I grew up in. I grew up in the hood, the projects, all that stuff. So I like finding those places and really understanding how it, it's a way for me to understand myself through traveling and understanding other communities because it also is a reflection of your your own personal community. Some things that you not, you may you might not normally pay attention to when you go to another place, you you see it and then you start to understand how um, things in your community came to be where they are. So uh, for me, I tried to uh, I told the team that I wanted to use local people from the neighborhood, and we. Uh, we worked really hard <laughs> to get people to participate because the first person was oh man, okay. There's this um uh, what's his name? Naeem. Naeem and his daughter. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, she was and she told me, I'll tell y'all the story. She was like, Yeah, uh his daughter is so pretty, so beautiful, so beautiful. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, everybody says about oh, daughter. <laughs> <laughs> And then when, when I walked in, I was like, damn, she is. She was beautiful. And she was very quiet and real. Um, just she didn't say much, she didn't do much, but she was just like a such a um, beautiful person. It was easy to get a good picture from him and her. Um, and then we got um Isaac from the, the corner store around the corner. Um and he's uh he's also a part of the fight. For, uh, gentrification in the neighborhood. He's and, also one of the only, he is the only black liquor store operator over here when yeah. there were more. Not saying we support. It's not only a liquor store though. It's, it's, not, it's a corner store, but yeah. of it's he's the only store. operator that's black over here now. Yeah. And then, so it took us another couple of days to find Ms. Pam to, um, to, to um, participate. And Ms. Pam was, um, and I, I, I'm not, I hope I'm not disrespecting Miss Pam because I'm from the South and we say everybody, we put Miss on everybody's name or Mr. So it's not to be disrespectful though. But Miss um, Pam, she was the very last person. It took us a, a while to find her, but she was eager and excited to come. And she brought her kids by her earlier kids her, and her grandkids and everything. So, and she also participates in community projects and everything like that. So for me, um, this was, um, it kind of brought everything full circle, like meeting people, really getting to know people, um, and also highlighting the community and uh, humanizing these people that people people that move in these communities don't normally don't understand like the di real dynamics of how communities are are built up. Even when you see crimes and things, you know people think that the crime the crime is just this thing, and that people in the community don't care. But actually, people in the community really are fighting and really know each other. And it's always deeper, deeper issues of how these things came about. And it's usually fighting over resources, right? Um, and, you know, the bigger picture is really trying to um, so re, re, resource, uh, um, re, put, re, refund the resources in these communities. So the crime, crime goes down because one thing that's going on in my city is they're hiring more police. They're buying bigger and bigger police vehicles and all these other things that they're not even using. So you see them just sitting on the, sitting there and they to pay uh, $500,000 for this thing, which they could have put $500 into programs that help the community, which really, um, really stops crime. That's the part that stops crime, being proactive rather than reacting. So that's what this piece is kind of about. And my aesthetics always comes from my idea of what being Southern is, right? And I'm using this blues poster, old school blues, blues poster kind of aesthetic for the work. Um, and in, in my other work, I play around with like uh, old school pen and pixel, uh, cash money, 
a no limit po uh, co CD cover type of aesthetics and using that uh, aesthetic and taking it into uh, these higher levels. I'm talking too long. I know I am. I'm just saying <laughs> anything. I'm putting the brag. <laughs> That's brag. <laughs> Brad, my boy, y'all. So, yeah. um, but yeah, that's that's um, that's what that's what my that's how I think about my work. It's it's really trying to take things that are considered low art, not not usually respected and appreciated, and and take it into that world. So that's what this work is about. Yeah. Yeah. So the last mural that we're going to highlight this evening is behind everyone. I'm going to flip the camera. I'm sorry. It's a collaborative piece between Kirsten Gaznavi and myself. I'm going to let Kirsten take the stage. I'm Kirsten Gaznavi. Uh, I primarily make articulated paper dolls on a smaller scale. So the last few years, I've started to go a lot larger with those dolls, and um, this is a particularly new challenge for me, any kind of like mural work I haven't done before, but um, Fatima and I collaborated with making kind of an interactive uh, puzzle kind of play thing, kind of plays off the themes that I generally work with, with dolls, and um, interactive kind of 2D into 3D kind of concepts. So, um, we created a scene, so it's kind of like a mom and her kids playing with the sunset behind it. Um, and right now, basically, the way that we cut it out is going to kind of direct where we go with finishing it. So um, kind of playing with just the tension of where we put pieces and overlap pieces so to be a little more interactive. <laughs> so, and the piece is, um, like she said, it's supposed to emulate youth, but also like the puzzle that you would see in a doctor's office. So you have those red pegs that you can pull and play. And, yeah. So yeah, um, again, bringing like some lightheartedness, but um, also what's not seen is like black family and play versus someone saying stop the violence. Like there is um, warmth and love in the community still and always has been. And I feel like the negative always overshadows and it's only coming from a small source, but it's overshadows the, the whole. And so we wanna, again, commonality is humanizing our experience and, um, and showing that we have balance in our lives too. So we... <laughs> Um, we can open it, um, any questions for any of the artists. The, I can tell you, so Eric said his piece was Funk the System. Vitus's piece is Respect Minds. Kirsten, and, uh, my piece is called Nurture. Hiram's piece is called, what is it? Community is Immunity. Yes. I said Anwar's was Our Crown. Brad's is Melanated Midwest. Um, Sam's is Breathe Easy. And I think that's everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. And Kevin's is um, Only Fans with a question mark. And so do we'll now open up the, the talk. To, to questions, even though you could have been asking questions the whole time. <laughs> One more time. So where can I get my five point tracks? Oh, I am wearing some custom five points here. It was um it was my design, but it was collaboration. I always try to collaborate with the artists I work with. I'm always like, oh, I got a project for you. And so the earring, there is a pair, but it's by Kirsten. She does a lot of different stuff. I commissioned a, a young artist named Manny Vibes to make this patch. The patch is actually made, inspired by a tattoo I have on my foot um, that I've had for a long, long time. And it's a star catcher, it's a, it's a fairy chasing a star. 
and then it has some initials to stand for every nigga is a star. Um, I have it engraved in my concrete in the back of this building is that at five points because I'm trying to elevate us um, always and make sure that we are stars or that people respect us as such. Um, the printing of my logo was done by another artist, Damon Joy, who also does photography. His work is in here in the gift shop as well. And then because of lack of time, my cousin sold on everything. So <laughs> that's a community for you. Um, but let me know if you're interested and I can work with you. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed your name. Vitus. 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 So I'm curious, um, the finding of the models for the painting, what was it that was taking so long? Was it that you had a really specific idea in mind of who you wanted, or was it that people were hesitant to be models? Yeah, people were hesitant to be models, but at the same time, like I do look for, it's like little bitty things. It's like things you can't really like put into words when you're looking for models. Yeah. And, and um, I think that was kind of like what it was, um, but it all came together. Like uh, we had, um, this guy and this guy and his daughter, but I want to also wanted like a like a more a older like woman to be in the in the work or whatever. Somebody from a different background than these two guys. A matriarch. Um, yeah. So it all kind of came together in that way. Do people ever share with you why they're hesitant to be? Um, no, I think everybody got different reasons to, to model. Um, but a lot of times most people the majority of people that don't come from modeling backgrounds they're kind of stiff initially so i do a lot of like talking to my models and like really like getting to know them and loosening up and i think uh i've always heard that when people look at my work they you know they think that i know my models pretty good like i've been on them for a while because i grab a lot of personalities that they have yeah so that's um I like, I don't think I've done, I did that as much. We, we kind of ran in, took pictures of Isaac, and we, we took pictures of them. We took, we took a few of them, spent a little time, but not as much. But, uh, and Miss Pam, she just came in, boom, and it was all good. So, Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Um, is it Pearson? I'm Pearson. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, did you do the puppet pin posable? Uh, like articulated dogs. Yeah. So, because I do stop motion animation, that's my work. There you go. I was just wondering if you have ever animated. Is something I'm interested in? Yeah. I want to say one thing too. If y'all haven't, make sure you go into the uh, gift shop and purchase some of Kirsten's work. Yeah. It's dope and it's real affordable. So grab it by right now because it won't be it won't be for, for a long time, right, Chris? Yeah. I grabbed three. I got three pieces. Yep. We literally been talking about that, and everyone's like, "Have you done stop motion?" So many people. So there you go. You put it in the air. It comes to you. Uh, any other question? I have, a, I have a question if I can ask one. One second, Michael, sorry. Uh, do you have a name? I know you talk about Middle American, uh, kind of like Native Aztec, like inspiration for your characters. Is there a name for the characters? That no. Kind of going no, kind of, at the moment, there's not. Okay. I just kind of make them, and then every, every I, I just knock them out now, and everyone is kind of like a a version of the one before that's cool. sometimes they have more eyes sometimes they have more teeth they're like extra ears and stuff that's cool but i kind of just uh i kind of just go for it when i'm when i'm making it um, i i realize that like the the least that i think about it while i'm in motion the, the better it is for me uh, but if i overthink it then it becomes like i almost like i'm pushing back and forth with the paint for a long time we have a question on zoom with michael I'm gonna mute myself so you can be. Yeah, sure. Well, I have a question and a comment. One, one, uh, I've known Vitus for a long time and he, he never asked me to pose for these things. I would love to, to pose for a painting. But uh, but my question is for the gentleman who painted the couple, I can't remember his name, 
Um, but he his he he made a comment about the murals not matching the neighborhood, right? Um, I don't what was what was the guy's name? He's the about the 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 pretty murals in the shitty place. Um, I was wondering if he imagined like what the perfect match would be for his piece. Like what kind of place would he imagine his piece would be the best match for? Was was that question for Kevin Bowright? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, well, ask your question one more can time. Can you ask your question one more time? We were in another room. The speaker was pulling from a different room. Here oh, I'm is. sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'm wondering, you know, you're seeing how you were going to the places and the, the murals didn't match the place, right? There was there was something off about it. It was, and so I'm wondering if if your mural, if what do you, where do you see what the perfect match for your mural being? Like, where would your mural go that would be a perfect uh, match, a perfect home for it that kind of spoke uh, in in harmony with each other? Oh, uh, the perfect, the perfect place for my mural. Uh. But actually be right outside of this place because yesterday when I was painting the mural, I was just out there painting to random people. Definitely never would probably come to an art place or any kind of art event or whatever. You know, a dude walk up and say, he say, homie, hey, that's you? You know, in the hoodest form he could possibly say. He says, that you? I said, yeah, that's me. What, uh, what you trying to do? I thought he was running up on me. But <laughs> he said, no, I'm just trying to get a close up. I'm trying to get it close up. I said, okay, come on over here. Come over here. I said, you know, this is the team. You know, she do art over here. I know these are her, her neighbors now. You know what I'm saying? So my mural could be next to any mural. I'm just saying, I, I'm not even saying that the murals that are there are wrong or this place. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you do that, why aren't we showcasing what these communities really are about? Now, like I said at the beginning of my talk, I said, I'm tasked with the labor of knowing what is, what isn't, and what could be. You know what I mean? Some people jump in at any point in that spectrum. I'm tasked with, with, with what is. So your what is could be what it is, and my what is could be what it is. You know what I'm saying? And they can coexist, and I don't know. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, I think it could be anywhere. To, to make it simple and short, I think it could be anywhere. And I think it should be next to the pretty murals. And if you make a pretty mural, make a mural of a true depiction because I think the true depiction is the real depiction and the pretty mural is the future. When you say pretty mural, you're talking, you're speaking on like- uh, I say pretty- Like flowers, like the flowers and things that don't have like a lot of meat that connects to the community. Yeah, I say that. I, I say it's a it's, it's a future. It's, it's a uh, fantasy Disney kind of drawn yeah, of yeah, a community. Yeah, it is not a true reflection of the community as it is right now. Okay. Now your plans for the future can be your plans for the future, but as of right now, I think we need to show some of the filth so people can connect and see things visually. Because like I said, I'm a visual person and all I can think of is the things in the way my brain thinks. You know what I'm saying? And what I can make to. So, yeah. yeah. There you got it. Uh, well, any thank other you. questions? Thank you. He said thank you. Thank you. Uh, he said, any other questions? Don't feel bashful and don't feel forced. <laughs> So no more questions. Um, I want to thank first and foremost all the artists because they have huh? I'm fine. Um all the artists for um getting this project done really quickly. Um it's been in the works, the planning, but the actual execution has been started this week. Um and it's been interactive and it's been very intensive, long nights slash days, like 4 a.m. plus um, to get this up and going. So their commitment to this um, exhibition is, is um, I can't thank them enough. 
Um, again, oh, I, I can't forget to thank the, the donors and sponsors. Um, they're listed on the walls. I can read them out if you need me to, but they are listed on the walls. Um, what I don't do in this space is give extra praise for people who can pay more if they have more, like the smallest amount, a dollar, what have you, and you willing to sacrifice and give it and support in that manner. I appreciate it all. So um, even when I title names, it's alphabetical order. There's no hierarchy here. And so I'm thanking everyone for the smallest to the largest um, amounts. Um, and um, I want to thank you all for coming out. Some of you are consistent supporters. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm grateful. And then my three year anniversary is coming up and the tickets are already sold out. So I appreciate that. Um, and, and making the, the, the space grow and be what it is. So it's, I also have carved in the back. It took a village. I mean that. Um, and so um, I will release you. Oh, <laughs> you, I have one thing. Of course you do. One second, Brad, let me Brad, hold on. No, so this stuff, me and Brad, we always been talking about, we need to make sure we give Fatima her extra praise. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyways, you are free. Tyrone, you do not have to leave. Um, also highlighting um, another artist with DJ Turtle Soup. He's another very um, intricate part of the space. We want to finish this up with some live DJing. And if the artist, young artist is still here, Joya, Joy Jean, she likes to go by, but Joya Watts, I don't see her. She's floating around here. She uh, is a recent grad of my ad. Uh, she was an intern here for a while. She just popped up. Uh, love her to death. Her works are like the braided and beaded sculptures in the gift shop. Um, I want to thank her because she did my hair for this exhibition. <laughs> so she did my, my hair while I'm working. And she came back, and so she's very well loved. And um, she is one of the people, like, we're always reaching out um, and trying to make sure she um, does even better than what we're doing. And so I wanted to highlight her, how she has her side hustle that actually bleeds into her, her art practice, that low art to high art um, combination that is very common in our community. So I want to highlight her. And then again, thank you all for coming. <laughs> Stay around, purchase some art. And, and if you have any organizations that you know you would like to put these works in, um, contact the gallery and we will handle, you know, getting that to them. Thank you. Thank you on the computer. Thank you, Harry. Bye, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Why? Why? Why?